here is Mr. All right. Josh's slides. Yeah, I usually start with this this first here, but since you guys have been here for so long, <laughs> you've already seen you've already seen the foolish wisdom of this world and why it's so easy to spot. And it's crazy to think that we were never told. I mean, I don't I don't know if anybody in the in the uh, chat can agree. You never heard about the firmament being a dome in school or in church ever. I, I don't think one time that I ever get that mental image of a dome. And so I'm talking, I was, yes, I was 33 years old when I discovered this stuff. <laughs> but uh, but that, that to me blew my mind that I was that old the very first time I ever even investigated this reality. And going back to Jubilees, um, Matt's been reading that, or he's already read that. And this book here to me, when it goes through creation and it matches up with the Genesis truth about creation it breaks it down and tells you how many great works he did each day for the six days of creation and day two with the firmament this is the only day with creation that he did one great work the rest of them he did several and so it's the only day that he did one great work and he only made the firmament and so if it was the atmosphere he would have been making plants first letting them produce oxygen and it wouldn't have been it wouldn't have really been that big of a deal. He would have kind of been resting on that day as well if it was just oxygen, nitrogen and all the things that our atmosphere is composed of. And so it's a pretty great structure. But on Can I say something real quick, Josh. Yeah, go ahead. I mean, it's it's such a big deal. That's the only thing he spent all day creating. Like we can't just pass that mm -hmm. just glaze over it. Like it's super important. Super I don't. Important. I don't know how we did. <laughs> yeah, jump in anytime, <laughs> and I, I have no clue how we just went. He made a firmament, put stars in it. All right, keep moving on. You know, like where's our chapter? And so we did. We skimmed past it, and even this structure is so important that even on day three, it's mentioned again when he takes the waters, and it says here in uh, Jubilees, and the waters did so as he commanded them, and they retired from off the face of the earth into one place outside of this firmament and the dry land appeared. And so he's taking water from off the earth, putting it up above the firmament. And then on day four, the firmament's mentioned again. So this is the one structure it's mentioned in three different days. It's referenced and he's accounting for it. So it is a big deal. It's the, it's the only aspect of creation I can think of that, is mentioned like that three different times and one day spent on it. And so he is literally, like we said at the beginning of the show, putting these stars, the sun and the moon inside the firmament. So really, really cool. And like I like uh, looking at flight schools online and going through them, they never have to account for stars and the rockets wouldn't, you know, we've allegedly been beyond our atmosphere and never have they had to do star navigation um, or account for curvature, but we're not talking about that here. Simply the great expanse above us, and so many things make a lot more sense. Like growing up, I remember seeing a comet and just looking at it like, how? How is ice and dust in space causing this magnificent thing? And then I, I went back when I'm first looking into the firmament and trying to find clear photos of this thing, and... Every time I find a photo of a comet that looks like a flashlight shining in the water, and I 100% believe because we're seeing a light for a sign or an appointed time in the waters above. So it's really cool to make that comparison. I'm not saying I'm 100% putting all my um, belief that that's what it is. The father has some uh, really cool things he does, but to me that just looks like a light shining in the water and could very well be. And this leads us into the proofs that I came across that just blew my mind. And the father has used this to bring so many people to him and see the firmament. And it's a phenomenon mentioned in the book of Enoch known as lightning sprites. I don't know why they call them that because the word sprites actually means disembodied spirits. And so it says here in Enoch, also another phenomenon I saw in regard to the lightning how some of the stars arise and become lightning and cannot part with their new form. Okay, that's worded a little differently than what I've read in other books, but I just kind of copied and pasted this together. Um, and 
in another version, it said they rise up and become lightning, but do not lose their form. And so you have these stars sending off this powerful burst of energy and the sprites are responsible for the most powerful types of lightning. We see where trees explode, you know, sometimes you see lightning strike and a tree explodes and sometimes nothing happens. And so there's just regular lightning, but there's this lightning caused by the sprites and this stuff was mysterious. It was first captured on uh, video or picture, a picture of this stuff. Cause it's so fast. It's like a camera flash. So imagine trying to take picture of a camera flash um, it's extremely fast and hard to capture. And usually since it's above a storm, you cannot see it unless you're at an angle to where you can see above the storm clouds and your typical clouds. Cause when people see this footage, they often go, Oh, well, you're just showing me clouds and water vapor in the air and waves moving Ooh. across it. But clouds max out at like 14 miles. You, they don't go above that. And so well, these at, lightning sprites. What, go, high, what height are these Josh? <clears throat> it's on they, the Yeah. They say anywhere. Um, between 100 kilometers, so about 60 to 70 miles, somewhere up there. They, they're they guesstimating. They don't know because they don't know how large these things are, how far away they are. So their guesstimate puts them at about the height that we watched the Go Fast rocket come to an instant stop when it ran that, into Yeah, that's what I was gravity. thinking. So, so they yeah. think they originate in the thermosphere? Is that what they think? Yeah, they, they use the word sphere everywhere. Stratosphere and then mesosphere, <laughs> thermosphere, yeah. Hemisphere. atmosphere. So, um, so, yeah, it looks a lot like the atomic bombs. They call these things elves, and they're like 186 miles wide, they guess. This where, where literally you're seeing the firmament light up. And so the way they were able to capture this is they got in a plane during a storm and flew above the clouds. I was going to ask you about that video. Yeah, yeah, the video you probably saw. What's the, the name of it? Video, everybody watching. It was by Nova, the one that they did, and that video is no longer on YouTube. They've made it private. So they're historic footage of these things that they're the only ones that have slow motion video of is now set to private. And if you go to our channel and go to the playlist called Firmament, you can find that footage there. You may want to download it or upload it because it is definitely something that they seem to not want us to see, even though they spent <laughs> A lot of money, and it's historic. I mean, it's the only one of its kind that I can find. Oh, and there's so, nothing to see here. Yeah. They're not trying to hide the truth or anything. Yeah. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah. And so here's a really good picture of the lightning sprite coming from the firmament all the way down, and it looks extremely familiar. It looks like those plasma lamps that we used to go crazy over. Yep, at, I had at the one as a teenager. Yep. Yeah, I want one now just so I could compare it to these things. It's so cool. <laughs> and so um, it looks a lot like them. And when you slow the footage down or pause it, brighten it, you can literally see part of that expanse. Oops, clicking through too fast. You can see part of that expanse, and it looks like I flipped upside down here, a geyser, just water shooting out of the ground. And it looks very similar, only you see the electric properties here. And it looks like fireworks being launched out of water, and you can literally see waves move across them. And that's what just took my breath away. I mean, I was speechless. I was like, and I, I kept adjusting the brightness and going, that's a wave. That's a wave like in the ocean. It, it's a ripple. And then these things shoot out, which matches up with what I had just read in Enoch about a star rising up. So you imagine something pounding the waters above. You would see that wave and then powerful just explosion coming out of there. So it's really cool that they were able to film this with these really fancy cameras, pointing them up at night. We could do this again. This is something that if, you know, somebody in our community had access to a plane, special cameras, some funding, or was just wealthy and wanted to do this for fun because they're crazy. They could do <laughs> this and have footage that's even better than this. Like this is something I've been holding on to for years. Like, look, you can actually see it. Yes, it's mentioned in declassified documents. It's mentioned in the Bible, but we actually have footage of this expanse and the way the father designed it. It's it's you can see it when you look up at night, but you can really see it during this phenomenon it, it just it's kind of like a camera flash right next to the firmament and lights it up so um it's really cool and seeing this kind of brought me back or it didn't kind of brought me back it brought me straight back to genesis 1 and looking at that flood and the middle images i always had was something kind of like this the ark resting on a mountain as the waters are dropping never did i ever picture this i don't, I don't know why in my mind I never saw a globe with floodgates shooting at it from all different angles and then it being covered completely in water. 
like this, like a little ball of water just suspended and moving through space with an arc <laughs> just going around it aimlessly. Like, yeah, me, I never can I jump in that. real quick? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, the <laughs> flood is one of many stories in the scriptures that doesn't work on their globe model. It doesn't mm-hmm. work. Like where are the where are the windows of heaven? And where's yeah. the fountains of the deep? Mm-hmm. There was a ton of water that rushed to the earth from both directions, and it don't work on the globe. That's yep. a great visual to do yeah. that. <laughs> it's one I have to look at, and it's not making fun of anyone that believes in the globe. I believed this 100%. I just never pictured it. And now when we force ourselves to go through that process, that painful process of going, man, what did I believe in? Um, you see things like this, and then you go back and look at uh, the verses about the windows of heaven. This yep. was some of the first, this is me going back. And I remember going to that, to that uh, word windows and saying windows of heaven. Was it literally a window? Because it uses the word window and it's talking about making the ark and it's like a hole in the wall. So I go back to the word window and it's a different word. It's talking about a sluice. It's not talking about something like an actual window. And so when you go to that word and look up what a sluice is, it's something like this. Can you, go they, back to the, can you go back to the Strong's numbers real quick? Yeah. So, so yeah. The, just to clarify for everybody that's watching. So the – I looked these up earlier. The one on the right is in Genesis 7, and the one on the left is in Genesis 1, correct? Mm-hmm. Okay. Just for, anybody that's, just for anybody that's watching, in case yeah. we'll take a screenshot – yeah, sorry. I said I'd go fast. I'm kind of going really fast, and I don't do it. Down. Take take yeah. your time, brother. <laughs> take your time. And so, yeah. So that that right there just that stood out to me that there is a structure with a sluice or like a chimney. It says a. I'll read this here. It says as if for lurking a lattice by implication a window dove caught because the pigeonholes or chimney with its apertures for smoke or a sluice with openings for water. And again, that's what a sluice looks like. You can raise these things up like a gate. And so floodgates um, really fitting there. So that's really, really cool. Interesting. And, and it brings it brings you to the instant fantasy of why can't we just go see this structure? And it's a big deal why we can't see it. it we're not supposed to see it. I wanted to book a, a flight to Antarctica right away. I was like, honey, we're going to Antarctica. I know you want to go to Australia. <laughs> We're going to Antarctica and I look up tickets. It's like $40,000 for a one-way trip. And I'm like, well, honey, uh, I'm going to have to get my retirement, you know, <laughs> something. And we're going to go to Antarctica. And they just going to cash out the 401k. You know, <laughs> so I could get funding, but it would just let me go where they would allow me to go. And for decades, they've been telling us that they are just studying the ice. And so we've been happy with that. For, you know, for quite a while, 50 years, you know, since NASA was founded. 1959 when the Antarctic ice. Treaty was signed. And so it's uh, it's an important lie. And as you can see throughout the Cold War, which is a very long time period, and every conflict since, all these nations, all of the same ones, a lot of these flags you see there are a part of the ISS, the International Space Station, the travel. They're, they're doing things peacefully and Can i say something real quick on that on that last slide josh yeah go ahead so this one was very interesting to me because when i started setting this topic where we live because there, there's a lot of topics under that umbrella but two mm-hmm. of my favorite we're actually touching on now is the firm and and and, and antarctica if i could spit it out mm-hmm. and once i once i learned about the antarctic treaty it was pretty much game over for me mentally and i realized and i actually did a video on this if anybody that hasn't seen it called the world is a stage once i realized about the antarctic treaty and all these so called main the big countries of the world the major continents or countries whatever they're they're supposedly at war with each other but they've had this peace treaty for over 50 years and then they're going to not even review it until another, was it 30 or 40 years from now? Mm-hmm. So you, re- you, you, what's really cool about this, learning true about where we live, is you have a lot less fear. You have more peace in your being. You have, to me, I, ha- I have a better walk with the Most High. Mm-hmm. But I, I don't buy into all the nonsense that's on the news now. I, I really didn't in the past because I've looked into conspiracies for a long time. But just knowing that all these countries, 
behind closed doors, they're they're shaking hands, but on TV they're doing this. They're playing their role. So that's mm-hmm. all I got on that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I believe the news before the the rebirth awakening, it just feels like you're being born again twice. I mean it's like it's it's a beautiful thing. But I I, I remember believing that Ebola was real and, and being scared, having that that spirit of fear that the father didn't give us and thinking yep. this could be the end of civilization as we know it, you know, like just, Oh honey, we got to go buy bleach and big trash bags and gas masks. Like we were, <laughs> we were legitimately going, this is serious, you know, like, yeah. And I knew and that. Fast forward to 2020. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that Antarctic treaty ends, I think, um, 2040, the year 2040, something 2045, or I can't remember the exact date. It's been several years since I looked into that, but, it's but a yeah, centuries away. a couple centuries away. No, a couple couple decades. decades. And so thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I know you said that and I agreed. <laughs> I'm like, wait. But uh but yeah, that's it's one of three things that I can think of off the top of my head that all these world leaders agree on peacefully and cooperatively yeah. and smile. Like you put me and anybody and a bunch of uh, a bunch of foreigners onto a plane for twenty five twenty four hours, let's say, they're not gonna be smiling by the end of that twenty four hours. But you put them on this little tin can in in space, allegedly, and they are up there for months at a time, and they're just smiling and happy all the time and peaceful. There's no conflicts. It's it's odd because we don't do that with anything else except for guarding Antarctica, space travel, and now as you're seeing in recent times with Revelation 18.23. And I'm, where, going to read, I'm going to read that before you go to the next slide. Yeah, go ahead. And what he's talking about is pharmakia, so... Pharmacy. Revelation 18, 23 says, And the light of a lamp shall not shine in you any more at all, and the voice of bridegroom and bride shall not be heard in you any more at all. For your merchants were the great ones of the earth, for by your drug sorcery, if you look that word up, it's pharmakia, all nations were led astray. And that's exactly what's going on right now in the world. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because we talked about that flood and what was the goal of the fallen and their offspring was to corrupt the creation that the father loved us, his beloved creations. And the flood happened. And now we're seeing they didn't change their goals. It's not like, well, the flood happened. We're going to stop doing that. No, they had this nope. pact. And so their offspring, the, the unclean spirits, they're going to try to carry on the legacy of corrupting all flesh and it's not going to happen. We're going to, they're going to try though. And they're trying right now. And it's, it's really, and they're doing it in a crafty way. You're seeing them use fear and it's for safety. And it's, it's, it's really, it's quite impressive and sad to watch, but I mean, it's, it's everywhere, and but yes, it's waking it people up because they've done it so quickly. Yep. Mm-hmm. They absolutely and, changed the makeup of the entire world since January, 2020. Yeah. It's amazing how they've been able to do that. Yeah. And so um a lot of a lot of crazy stuff we could talk about here and um look back at like some of the people who allegedly made it through. I was able to talk to somebody who's who woke up to the truth about creation and their grandfather was one of the people here in this picture, one of the small number of people um that made it beyond low earth orbit. And you know, some of them passed away because they knew too much. <laughs> they got sadly um met their fate yeah like but, hanging yeah. a lemon <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. yeah some, some some sad stories there and some weird stories when you look at that but only a handful of people that we put our trust in that have allegedly gone past what we would know as the firmament the atmosphere the heavens they've gone past it hey and, there's buzz in the middle yeah buzz yeah Is i wonder him? how many of the men in this picture are from the military yeah they they all most all of them were masons and and that gets that gets weird because I mean, the whole, their oath, and I, I've been comparing with a video I'm doing, the Masonic Oath, the Jesuit Oath, and then looking at what the Watchers said back in, in the um, Book of Enoch, they are binding themselves. And, you know, every time you do a contract, it's a legally binding contract. And, yep. um, and they bind themselves. That's what they They use the same terminology, and they have these goals, and it's 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 really telling as to how these deceivers work. They don't just deceive us. Like we talk about, they, those, those that are lying and and keeping these secrets, mankind is too dumb to do this on their own. And it's those powers of darkness. We're told about that. We wrestle against not flesh and blood. 
that we are fighting against. And we might get all of our anger towards this one organization. But again, most people at, at NASA are good hearted people. And it's like the top 4% are the ones helping to, per, uh, you know, perpetuate this lie. And it's like that. And, and most, I mean, even education, I'm a teacher and I love the people I work with. And a lot of them, they are perpetuating this lie and they don't know it. So was I. I used to show the movie The Martian to my students oh, and do no. projects with it. Yeah, I mean, that was my favorite movie, The Martian. I used to um, like that movie too. Yeah, Gattaca, which is like becoming a true story, the discrimination based on your um, genetic modification status. And so um, that movie is becoming too real, but it's still one of my favorite movies, even though it does have segments that deal with uh, space flight. That's kind of his goal is to become an astronaut. He has no clue he's going to run into a firmament. But um but yeah, it's 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 tough. And my first day in the classroom, I was holding up a globe. So I've been oh, part man. of that system. It doesn't mean you're evil. I had miracles happen while I was a part of that and believe that. And just thankfully, I'm fortunate and blessed to come out of that and uh, to see the lies for what they are, because these people, they made it past. And then all of a sudden they stopped. You have 24 people made it through safely, came back. It was so easy. They were going back, jumping around, hitting golf balls on the moon. Yeah, the, right. uh, the lesser light to rule the night. And then we Can just I say something real? Yeah, Can go I ahead. I want to bring up that this slide right here is very telling because a lot of people will say, and I actually have a, a friend that's a pilot, and he said, well, how do you have all these millions of people around the world covering up this conspiracy? But I purposely asked you a minute ago how many of these guys were in the military because the guy that I'm talking about, he's a he was a – I think 10 years in the military, obviously the Air Force, because he was pilot, and then 20 years as a commercial airline pilot. Now he's retired. And then I, I, when he asked that, like, how can how, how can they cover this up? And I said, that's easy. Compartmentalization. And he went, uh-huh. And I didn't have, <laughs> I didn't have to explain anything else because he's, he's former military. He gets it. Yeah. The military cannot work without compartmentalization because – the people at the top of the pyramid know way more than the people at the bottom, and they can't tell them everything. They can't for yeah. it to function properly, and NASA is no different. The people way at the top know all the all the details, all those classified documents, but some of them are declassified now. They know that stuff, but the laymen mm -hmm. that are that are looking at data, just hitting on a on a keyboard, they don't know any about. They they love their job. They're they're a good person. Most of them are. They go home and whatever, they live their life. But, that, I mean, <laughs> they don't know they're perpetuating a lie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the guy that we talked to and had on our channel, um, Jesus Freak Computer Geek, he, he's a he's a funny guy. He, he was saying that they would have Bible studies and things and devotions on the way to work. And this was, you know, yeah. before the time. I think they, they banned the name Jesus from being used in, like, flyers and things at NASA. And then not long after that, everything started falling apart. And that might have been their, their downfall when they started <laughs> banning biblical teachings and things. But, um, yeah, they, good people. And a coworker of mine used to work there and, and uh, kind of makes fun of me without <laughs> making fun of me openly. Because I think the secret got out what I believe. And so now I'm the, the foolish person that that's like a, considered, I guess, a conspiracy theorist at work. And I'm okay with that. Yep. It's worth it. Oh, yeah. But yeah, the um, the these twenty four people made it past what they call the Van Allen belts. It looks like a donut surrounding the world. That was the the cover story that was discussed. This is the thing, the barrier that was invented shortly after, and scientists actually detected a barrier above us, and that was a big deal. They were like, "This is this barrier. We cannot penetrate this barrier." And then NASA to the rescue, they found it. And they even said in the article on NASA's website that their spacecraft spotted the barrier and it's a man-made bubble surrounding the Earth. So you can all sleep at night. We have this barrier surrounding us. It's like this science fiction barrier, but it's made from just very low frequency waves. No biggie. So NASA to the rescue <laughs> when it comes to this Star Trek-like barrier that they found. And, yeah. and they do bounce signals off of something above us. And when they do, it's the ionosphere usually is what they say. Even when we send line-of-sight signals from England to Australia, you know, all, all the way around, they say it's the ionosphere and it's bouncing, you know, hundreds of little bounces off of that ionosphere, ground, water, ionosphere, just hundreds and thousands of times. 
and then, you know, there's their own website, so you can read their own words, but, um, there just he lots is. of, yeah, there's Mr. Allen Bean. Lots of, lots of funny stories as you, as you start to look into this and, um, I won't go into all of it. We've been here for quite a while, but, uh, anytime, yeah, let me say, let me say this investigate real quick. That. Yeah, go ahead. So there's a guy that ah, I forget his name. He, he's done a few video, a few documentaries exposing the moon landing and all that. But so he was, he was at this press conference. I, I, I don't remember when this is, maybe the 80s or 90s. It's pretty old. But he asked the guy a question, and then he made this comment where he said, I'm not sure we went – wait, what did you say? Yeah, yeah, that's what he asked. Your flight path took you through the belts. I'm not sure we went far <laughs> enough to encounter the Van Nation, <laughs> Allen radiation belts. And then he had a follow-up question he asked, so – you didn't have any issues with your cells because if you go through a lot of radiation, it's going to tear you up. And he's like, mm -hmm. "No, I have, I haven't had any problems with my cells." Like, I mean, about, it's yeah, lying like crazy right through his teeth. Yeah, it was, it yeah, was, okay. it, was kind of, it was funny to watch. <laughs> yeah, somebody said, "Okay, NASA." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and by the way, they hadn't been discovered yet. I think that's what. <laughs> that's one of his closing statements. Is like yeah. they hadn't been discovered yet, so we're safe. Um, <laughs> Mr. Uh, Alan Bean. Everyone. Just because you dis ain't discovered it, don't mean it's not there and it's not real. <laughs> yeah, I think that was that was that might have been from the documentary. A uh, funny thing happened on the way to the moon. Pro and, yeah, uh, probably. Golly, Bart Sabrell, he does the best job. I mean, like he's a globe believer too. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. he does the best job with his. Yeah, he got punched in the face by Buzz. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's been punched by an astronaut. Man, he could he could take a punch too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> trying to make him swear on the Bible. Um, Bam. Yeah, but even even looking into this stuff and seeing the fraud and the lies, you still have questions. And a lot of people ask, what about asteroids? What about craters? What about comets? Good questions. You know, the comets, we kind of saw the connection with the waters above. And asteroids is one of those things I started investigating too. And it's a prove all things type of journey. I, I do believe it, um, that there's a firmament no matter what, even if there are asteroids, because the word speaks about things being cast into the sea uh, I think this is Revelation 8.8, 8, where it says, And the second angel sounded, and as it was, as it were, a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea, and the third part of the sea became blood. And so you, you hear about things, whether it's literal or not, um, you hear about things being cast down from above, and there's something above us. Anything yep. can be cast down. And a lot of times when you see things fly through the sky, they look electrical, almost like a light burned out or a firework. And, um, mm -hmm. but we've seen, we've actually seen craters. And the cool thing about craters is that we know their cause. Most of the time it's caused from explosions from underneath. That's why the outer edge is pushed upward because the pressure shot up, you know, where there's water vapor down, there's water beneath this. There's a lot of pressure, there's heat, there's gases, there's explosions, sparks, and so you see these explosions all the time and they're starting to happen in the Arctic for the first time ever. And it's freaking people out because they're having oh, all of these. That's interesting. I saw a special on that Nova. The same people that did the uh, firmament footage are now talking about the Arctic and the, these massive sinkholes and craters that are popping up. And so sometimes what's the name, what's the name of that video? I'm like, um, I'll try to find it. It keeps getting recommended surprisingly. Yeah. Yeah. Send it um, to me. Um, but I've one, got it in one, my watch history. One cool thing about the, these craters is you can see them all around the world. Mm -hmm. and they're fountains all the of the same. deep they're all the same shape <laughs> yeah possibly the fountains of the deep that'd be interesting to kind of to find that out but that's a uh, possible explanation for them yeah the, the massive ones if there's seven of them because there was seven of them mentioned and uh seven fountains of the deep because it says in uh two esdras that the world's divided into seven parts um so there's seven fountains of the deep and seven floodgates of heaven and so one of these craters is a known cause and the other one is like a museum where you go to look at videos of a, a computer animated asteroid smacking into the world and if you've noticed every time you see a video of those asteroids smacking into the globe the globe is not moving we're just sitting here and waiting for something to happen and to hit us and we're like oh we're not moving but in their reality the one they give us if we're traveling as fast as they say the triple six 66,600 miles per hour, we would be long gone, especially with the half, almost half a million mile per hour speeds. We would be moving this many earth diameters if each one of these dots represents one earth. That's how far we'd move in just one day. 
So <laughs> an asteroid coming at us, we're gone. We're long gone. I couldn't squeeze all of those in, into a slide. If I made them small enough to fit them into one row, it would. You that's that's some really good aim if, if we're yeah. hit by an asteroid. <laughs> yeah, and they can predict these things like uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson's like, yes, and 20 years from now, it'll pass between here, and if it does hit, it'll land at a football stadium in California. <laughs> On February 21st, you know, like he makes up all these dates and by, you know, like we've got it all figured uh, out because yeah. uh, show me a picture of it, you know? Oh yeah. no, we just, we don't have really good quality pictures of it. And this uh, is a pretty yes. funny comment right here. Yeah. The, the moon, moon doesn't have skid marks. Any skid marks. <laughs> this is a really good question. As actually goes into our, our next slide is, um, and I, I think it was Jake Gibson uh, used to be the F E a hole and he changed his name, but he was, he brought that point up that the, craters on the moon are perfect circles and if things are hitting it from all these different angles they would be they would be dig marks they wouldn't be perfect circles yep. they would have to be hitting right at the right angle and another good point he made was that they would have to be shooting straight from earth at the moon like we're, we were at war with the moon because that same side is always facing us always all the time yeah and we so, never see the other side yeah we just see the one side as if it was set there and locked into place into a clock above us. And that's just how it's been. But there's an experiment. It's in our playlist of, um, I think it's called uh, Flat Earth Questions and Answers by Good Times for All, where he takes a smooth surface of, on a it's like a paint can lid, and he uses a Vendigraph generator. And if you don't remember what those are, it's those things that you can, it's like a metal sphere. You put your hands on it and your hair stands straight up and everybody's like, wow. And it makes sparks. It's a uh, Vendigraph generator. And he did an experiment and it reminded me of the lightning sprites where he gets a paint can lid full of this fine powder and he hits it with sparks. I mean, just pop, pop. You just see the sparks hitting it. And when he zooms in with his camera, it's a copy and paste of the moon surface. And so I took a wow. little picture of the actual surface of the moon and compared it. And it's, it's not the highest quality. It's not high definition, but you can see it looks like I'm looking at the moon. If I colored that gray, it would look just like the surface of the moon. You'd think that's hey. Nikon P900 footage. It would look. It would look <laughs> like the set of the moon landing. <laughs> yeah, it would look just like that set. And um, yeah, it's 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 funny. And uh, but we do have a piece of the moon though. We do have a piece of the moon to look at before we go. Um, that made it back. Eh. And and <laughs> this was from uh, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin. They gave it to this um museum in the in du it was the dutch museum i think and the dutch prime, prime minister and all of them it was a big deal and they found out it was petrified wood it wasn't even so there was either trees on the moon and they didn't tell us about it come on buzz that's your lying. a game come on yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they they always explain these these stories away but there's there's a lot of cool stuff we could talk about um with this subject but i know you guys have hopefully seen enough to start your own investigation if you haven't into the firmament and um, just leave with remembering that if any man or woman among you seemeth to be wise in this world, it's time to become a fool. The word tells us, it says, let him become a fool that he may be wise for the wisdom of this world is foolishness with Yahuwah for it is written. He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. So all these wise people who are deceiving us, it, their, their days are numbered and they've been yep. deceived. Pray for them because they need they need it. <laughs> These people that are deceived, they need to wake up and um, start blowing the whistle because time is literally running out. And the powers of darkness they work for are limited by what we do. And so praying for everyone you can, people that are under the influence of witchcraft, whatever it is, start praying because these powers of darkness and people that serve them, they are devoted. They are so devoted to yeah. them. The spiritual world is more real than the physical world. And the Father loves you. The creator of the firmament loves you. He wants time with you. And so when we do that, we start spending time with him. It changes us. And when we start walking with him and doing more than just talking with him, we start changing the lives of other people around us. And it's just this ultimate effect. I mean, it just reaches so many people. You don't know who it's going to reach. You know, Matt over here, for example, he's he's been... Um, reached by this truth within the last year. I mean, how how long has it been? Uh, you know, it's hard to like. You don't sit there and like, oh, it's been this many days. Yeah. I it think seems I'm, like forever. You've done more research than most of us have in the last. 
so what I months. so what I did something similar mm-hmm. to Skiba y'all y'all rested so so he I think he committed to six months of just going hard at the topic so I mm-hmm. I committed a year and I think I'm at about ten months ish I believe nine or ten and I mean it's really really cool since you're on I guess I can share so I got Dave's app if anybody let's see maybe I can pull it up real quick <laughs> yeah. What kind of challenge is that? What is it called? The uh... oh oh yeah yeah I can share that too. Yeah, let's see. So I got Dave's app. Oh man, that light's too bright on it. Yeah, but, but Dave Weiss is and I and just a side note, I'll have him on in a couple of weeks, so that's gonna be nice. Exciting. And Mister Ben from Taboo Conspiracy will be on next, and possibly somebody else. I won't say who. <laughs> so I had a friend that. Challenged me to take the fourteen day challenge. You got any more slides you want to cover? Or you just want to. I know that's off? good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, we've we've covered pretty right. much everything. I just had some extra stuff put in. Oh man, my camera's like now crazy. you're turning into a. You're not real. I knew it. <laughs> He's not real. He's a shill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what was the question? Oh, how did I get into yeah. it? So you I had, had a, a friend. Yeah. Yeah, I had a friend that he would send me nuggets every once in a while, like in text message. He would send me wits he gets it videos and i'm just like ah oh, come on ah oh, why are you sending me this stuff it don't matter blah 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 all that stuff that people don't research the topic with open mind would say i know better now and he kept saying why don't you take the 14 day challenge and i'm like what download the <laughs> app and just watch it watch the feature video for 14 days and here i am about nine or ten months later i don't watch it every day but normally yeah. in the morning if it's a short one like 10 minutes or less i will usually watch it wow that's awesome. So it's a, it's a, it's a small it's a small you know it's a, it's a growing number of people that are affected by this and I'm telling you the testimonies come in daily and it just blesses me and I, I'll be need motivation. I'm like, man, I'm covering this topic. It's controversial. The other day I was saying that and I said, oh, man, this is I know I'm going to get some some heat for this and some persecution. Yep. And I said, I need some motivation here. And I look at um, I go to YouTube and I had a comment from somebody saying, I just subscribed to your channel. And the verse that you shared in your video was the verse of the day. And it was the one about persecution and and having joy. And I was like, wow, what, you know, like how cool is that? That, Like as soon as I needed some motivation there, it was. So it's, it's been a blessing being a part of this community. The most humble people I've ever met, you know, we have our meetups. I met you and, and just, you can, you can account, you know, or I guess agree with me on this, that everybody there was humble, seeking truth, just the most awesome people you'll ever meet. And so um, if you're wanting to become one of the fools, you're going to be in company with some good people that are okay with being foolish for the father. It's okay. And so we don't judge you. You can come up with some crazy stuff and we'll actually listen to you because yep. <laughs> we'll investigate anything. Yeah. I remember what I was going to say earlier. So I was, I would watch the ITRH videos. I would watch Wit Wits it gets it. Uh, who else? You know, you have a few people you're watch consistently. Then you go through phases, but I watch, I saw, I got turned on to your videos and I really enjoyed them because you would always try to tie it into scripture when other people that Mm -hmm. believe in FE, I don't want to get, I don't want to get it dinged. Yeah, (laughs) I know. But they they won't tie it into scripture, but you, you, you're pretty good about that. And I was like, man, I like that. I I like his style of teaching. And, and so I was um, watching one of your videos and then on one of the suggested under, I saw, I was like, meet up at Ringgold. What? <laughs> what? What? That's thirty minutes from where I live. And then I ended up calling you when we were in Florida last summer. Yeah. And then it's crazy. We lit. We live like thirty minutes away from each other. <laughs> yeah, that is so cool how that worked out. Yeah, it's, it it was like all sorts of connections coming together all at the same time. Like I would yep. get off the phone with one person, and then you'd call me, and then I'm like, wow, this is so cool. And then somebody else would call me, and I was like, <laughs> man. It was yeah, my wife. Was my wife my had to come upstairs and like get me off the phone because I'm not normally one that sits there for over an hour on the phone. She's like, no. "Are you okay? What are you doing? Come <laughs> on, let's go to the beach. What like, are you doing?" No, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I like this comment here from uh, Yappy Town. My brother would love that because he worked on that final card video forever. So what, the final what card, comment is it? Uh, Yappy Town. It's at ten fifteen, so it's recent. Um, says. Uh, Deep inside the rabbit hole and FEB's video final card got me totally sold on, on FE. Can't thank y'all enough. Yeah, my brother, 
he went crazy. We were, he came over to my house. I've never seen him work so hard on anything in all of our lives. And he's, you know, won championships and all these different things. But he was like, he laid out post-it notes all across my computer, my uh, desk over here and was like, how do I arrange this? How do I arrange this to where it's going to wake people up? And, you know, and I was like, I don't know, man, you got too many note cards and scribblings and different thoughts. And <laughs> so I'm trying to help him. And he about gave up. He'd worked on it for like three months. He goes, it's just not flowing. He said, I'm about to give up. He said, I'm about to just give it to you and have you take your way with it. And I was like, keep going, keep going. Then I gave him a deadline. I was like, Hey, I talked to David Weiss. He said, he'll put it on the app. So you've got like two or three weeks. And then it was like, <laughs> ah, okay. So he started really oh, hammering oh. it out. And so gave him that extra motivation and, uh, he wants to redo it and make it even better. He's like, I can, I can, I can do it better, you know. Make it he, better. He, it's pretty amazing yeah. as is. Yeah, he's new to making videos. He's only been making videos for like a few years, a couple of years. And I talked him into doing it. I said, you might be good at it. You're artistic. You might be. And so he would be blessed to hear that. He likes when people say that was your best video on your channel because it was one of his mainly. Well, tell him I said that. <laughs> he gets all excited. We always used to compete with each other, so he likes whenever people tell him he's better. Well, Didn't happen much when we were little, so now he likes it when he's older. Of course, you're twins. <laughs> <laughs> the brothers. Yeah. So I got some comments I guess I can share real quick on the screen real quick. This one's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> Just like the donut, their story has a big hole. Yeah. I wish I'd have been able to pull that one up when you had the, mm -hmm, the donut the hole. Yeah. yeah, on there. Why don't they fly out from the Arctic or the Antarctic? There's no radiation belts there. They never do. Oh. And you know the Earth is moving upward through space. Just fly out the bottom. Just fall, free fall. <laughs> uh uh. <laughs> yeah. Hey, there we go. There he yeah. is. All right, show us how you float in it. Uh, float. <laughs> I'm gonna do my backflip, my straight backflip that they always do with their <laughs> they put their arms. They're like, hey, let me catch you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's man. there's Russian astronauts. Uh, Sergey, they're all named Sergey, by the way. Sergey Dozenov. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> Wake up back there, buddy. Oh look, man, look busy. Read stuff. You gotta, you gotta follow the screen. You gotta read stuff. Like they, they look so busy. It's like they'll be reading these papers and the reading instructions, and then they, they're just always doing stuff. They're always doing science. It's pretty funny. And the kids always ask, "Can you do a backflip?" What when, when yeah. they do their? I wonder when the last time they did a live stream on the ISS. Ooh, yeah, I know. It's, it's every day they do them like every day now. They got the same little virtual setup going on with the VR contacts. They've mastered it, and so they go and everything's nominal. But uh, Wes Blaze said he's dropping an FE mixtape tonight. Ah. So you guys better check that out. If you don't know Wes Blaze music, he's in the comments. Go click that, follow him, and watch his series that he did. Eat Uncommon sleep. ground. Uncommon Eat ground. Sleep. Eat, sleep, debunk the globe, repeat. Check. Yeah. <laughs> That's it why is. we're here. Yeah, so awesome, yeah. Well, I'm going to have to get off here. We're leaving. We're going out of town tomorrow, and so i um, got to go pack my bags. And um, Fine, then. <laughs> yeah, but it's been fun. We've talked about some crazy cool stuff with the firmament. My favorite topic about the creation aspect is so cool to talk about the firmament, the expanse. Yep. That's going to play a part in our future. We're going to see things happen with it, and so... I look forward hey, to that. It's aliens are coming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that might be a possibility according to their plan. Yeah. So, yeah. A deception. It's going to be fun. Pockets All right. Thanks for, thanks for everybody in the chat. Lively as always. Heck yeah. Love thanks. you guys. Thanks, Josh, for coming on. <laughs> been fun. So we're going to sound off and tell everybody have an amazing evening. If you haven't already subscribed, please do. And hit the bell. Hit the bell. Like the video. <laughs> I didn't realize how important it is. Keep hitting the bell. When you hit it, yeah. don't just hit it once. Make sure it's still selected. Be you have to do that with all your truth or channels. Yeah, because they're because we live in 1984 now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. God bless you, all Susie. Right. Yeah, bless her. yeah, bless everyone. Have a great Stop. evening. We're gonna jump off here. See you guys. Shalom, shalom.